So today I'd like to share a pretty interesting result that allows you to show when the square root of a number is irrational. And there's a good thing about this approach as well as a bad thing about this approach. So the good thing is that it does not implicitly or explicitly use the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And most proofs by contradiction that, for instance, the square root of two is irrational, use really the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in the background, even if you don't mention it. So that's definitely good, not having to use that theorem. But what's the bad thing? Well, for specific examples, you have to do a non-trivial calculation. So you'll see that it will be obvious that the square root of 2 is irrational, but for instance, to show the square root of 13 is irrational becomes much more difficult. Okay, so all of this is going to be built out of the following result. So if we can find natural numbers, x and y, such that x squared minus n times y squared equals 1, then the square root of n is irrational. Okay, so let's see how we'll do this. So let's suppose that the square root of n is rational. So I guess that means that we're working towards a contradiction. So let's sneak that in here. So by way of contradiction, we will suppose that the square root of n is rational. And then we'll write the square root of n as a over b, where a and b are natural numbers. And they're also in lowest terms. Although that's not really gonna matter here, but we might as well take them in lowest terms. Okay, so now we'll insert that version of the square root of n into our equation. So that's gonna leave us with x squared minus, well, n, but n is the square root of n squared. So I can write that as a squared over b squared times y squared equals one. So there's our n. But now I'm gonna clear the denominator so that this looks a little bit nicer. So that's gonna look something like this. We have b squared x squared minus a squared y squared is equal to b squared. And then we're gonna flip this equation a little bit and then build what will be an important inequality for our argument. So let's take this, b squared is b squared x squared minus a squared y squared. But we see this term right here and immediately we notice that it's a difference of squares. And anytime you see a difference of squares, you probably wanna factor it and just see what happens. And so that's what we'll do here. We'll factor this as bx minus ay times bx plus ay. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Now, since this is positive, this b squared is positive, that means both of these are positive. Okay, well, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this term right here, which is a positive term by our previous discussion, but that will create something smaller because we're multiplying by a positive term. Well, that positive term, I guess it could be equal to one, but most likely it's bigger than one. Well, that doesn't even matter. If it's bigger than or equal to one and we remove it, we end up with something smaller. So what we started with will be bigger than or equal to bx plus ay. Okay, but then in turn, that is strictly bigger than b times x because a and y are both natural numbers. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have b squared right here is bigger than b times x right here. So that gives us a pretty interesting inequality. Well, may not seem pretty interesting, but it will be. And that is that x is less than b. So what do we mean by that? Well, the expression of the square root of n as a rational number, if you take that denominator, well, that denominator is larger than the x part of any solution to this equation. And that'll actually form the seed of our final argument for this claim. So let's maybe bring this fact up and then we'll move on. Okay, so, so far we have the following situation. If x and y satisfy our equation where the square root of n is rational with denominator b, then x is less than b. 
Okay, so now let's maybe say that, well, we've got a solution and let's call that solution x naught, y naught. Okay, so let's write that down. So let's suppose x naught, y naught are natural numbers such that x naught squared minus n times y naught squared is equal to one. So in other words, they satisfy this condition. So notice immediately from our previous result, what we've done so far in this proof, we know that x naught is itself less than b. And then uh, we're gonna recursively define a sequence out of these two seeds, x naught and y naught. And how will we do that? Well, let's do this. So for k bigger than or equal to zero, we set xk plus one equal to the following expression. So it'll be xk squared plus n times yk squared. So I guess it's pretty similar to what's happening here on the left-hand side of our equation, just with a plus sign. And then we'll set yk plus one equal to, well, it's gonna be in terms of xk and yk as well. And in this case, it'll be two times xk yk. And now here's a really important part of this, and that is that this xk plus one is most definitely strictly bigger than xk. I think that's clear because notice when you square a natural number, you get something larger. Well, and then we're adding something to it. So that's most definitely bigger than xk. So in particular, that gives us an increasing sequence of numbers. So we start here at x naught, and then we'll have x1, which is bigger, x2, which is bigger, x3, which is bigger, so on and so forth. And now we know x naught is less than b because it satisfies this equation. And as you might guess, what we will prove is that all of these also satisfy the equation. And we'll do that inductively. So I won't write down everything super carefully, but we will do the induction step. The base case is already done kind of by our assumption. So let's look at xk plus one squared minus n times yk plus one squared. So we hope that we can write that in terms of xk and yk and that it's equal to one in the end. Okay, so writing this out, we have this is xk squared plus n times yk squared all squared and then minus n times two xk yk all squared. Okay, so let's expand that. That will give us xk to the fourth plus 2nxk squared yk squared plus n squared yk to the fourth, and then minus four times n times xk squared times yk squared. Okay, so that's kind of a mouthful. But notice we can get some nice simplification here. So check it out. This 2n times xk squared yk squared will simplify with this 4n times the same thing. In fact, we can scrub this 4n out if we just change this plus sign to a minus sign. And then what we're left with has a nice factorization. And what is that factorization? Well, it says xk squared minus n times yk squared all squared which if we made an induction hypothesis, that would be equal to one squared, which is one. So in other words, if x, k, y, k satisfy our equation, then x, k plus one, y, k plus one also satisfy our equation. But notice that x naught, y naught satisfied our equation. That means x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and so on and so forth also satisfy our equation. So that means we've got infinitely many solutions to our equation. And then furthermore, all of their x parts have to be less than b by our previous result. So let's put that up here. This all has to be less than b. But now let's sit back a little bit and think why that is a problem. Well, all of the x's are natural numbers. So we have a strictly increasing infinite sequence of natural numbers, but that sequence is bounded above by b. But of course, that's not possible because 
any strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers that's infinite will grow without bound. That's pretty obvious. So that leads us to our contradiction. So I guess I didn't write the final argument down, but I said it in words, I think hopefully clearly enough. Okay, so we've got a contradiction. Well, what did we contradict? Well, that's where I like to go up to one of our original places in the proof where we made an assumption instead of following logic. And the assumption that we made was that the square root of n was rational. So that assumption must be false. But if that assumption is false, then that means that the square root of n is irrational. And that proves this claim. Okay, so now that we've got this claim, let's look at some applications to prove numbers that are clearly irrational are in fact irrational. So here I've got some applications for this result that we just proved. So we've got three squared minus two times two squared is one. That's pretty clear. Nine minus eight is equal to one. But that means we've got a solution to x squared minus two times y squared equals one. But that means that square root of two is irrational by what we just proved. Next up, nine squared minus five times four squared is one. Well, that's 81 minus 80. That means that the square root of five is irrational. Well, here's a big one. So 649 squared minus 13 times 180 squared is equal to one. Who knew? And that means that the square root of 13 is irrational. And actually, I did this one in Mathematica. And this value of x and y were the only solutions if x and y were between 0 and 1,000. So that in itself is pretty interesting. But notice if we go up from 13 to 37, we get a much nicer, smaller solution. 73 squared minus 37 times 12 squared is 1. That means 37 is irrational. So let's get back to what we said over here. So we did not use the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in our proof, either explicitly or implicitly. But as I said, for specific examples, there's a non-trivial calculation. That's highlighted by this right here. Of course, I did it in a computer. I think it would be pretty difficult to do it by hand. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.